Today I will show you a crime, drama, thriller film from 2017 titled Shot Caller. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Money writes a letter to his son apologizing for the life he's led and saying that he hopes he doesn't follow in his footsteps. He wants him to take care of his mom and move on. He tells him that he's proud of him and that he loves him and that this will be the last time he will hear from him. Money seals the envelope as an alarm starts blaring. Guards rush to the cell block and find that one of the prisoners has hanged himself. Roberts, a guard, puts Money in cuffs and leads him out of the cell block. Money receives his release papers, $200 and a temporary ID. The guard wishes him luck and points him to a van which takes him to the train station. Money is met by Shotgun and Howie when he gets off the train. They pick him up and tell him they're going to take him out to dinner and buy him some new clothes. Kutcher, a police officer, is notified of a convicted criminal holding a teenage girl hostage in his house. He goes up to the door and knocks but there's no answer. Instead, he is shot through the door, but he's wearing a vest. Kutcher barges in and kills the offender. Money's friends take him to a party with lots of drinking and substances. He goes to the bathroom to wash his face and tries to calm down. When he comes out, there's a girl laying on the bed in her birthday suit, waiting for him. He tells her to put her clothes back on, since he is not a simp. Once back in the living room, shots are fired through the window, one of the bullets hitting the girl. Money's friends escort him out and Howie, a younger member of the gang, gives him a ride. Eventually, Money has him pull over and drops him off. He tells Howie he's going to get a hotel and to meet him there in the morning with two prepaid cell phones. Ten years earlier, Money plays a game of basketball with some of his work friends. He discusses some business plans with Tom in the locker room and plans on discussing them further at dinner that night. Money returns home and greets his son, Josh, who is eating dinner in the kitchen. He goes upstairs and greets his wife who talks about her project she's working on for design school. They both get ready to go out to dinner with Tom and his wife. They all have a great time at dinner, sharing several bottles of wine. On the way home, Money drives, and they all start talking about what to do for their next date night. Money is distracted and runs a red light, getting them into a car crash and killing Tom. He goes to prison for manslaughter. His lawyer tells him that he'll be facing seven years in jail if he tries to fight it, but if he takes the plea, he'll only be looking at 16 months. His wife comes to talk to him and he explains the situation. But Money tells her he has a better chance of getting home to her sooner if he just takes the plea. She wants to bail him out and take the case to court. Back in the present, Kutcher meets with his fellow officers and discusses the gun trade they're trying to take down. His colleagues suggest he stays out of it since it's only been a week since he was shot, but he insists on being part of the bust. Howie meets up with Money at his hotel the next morning and they drive to a local flower shop. Inside, Money asks to speak with Herman, and they talk in a back room. They discuss the gun trade and who's in charge. Herman had asked for Money specifically for this job. Afterwards, Howie and Money go to a diner where Money asks the kid how he found out about the guns in the first place. Howie tells him he came across them while he was serving in Afghanistan. Shotgun shows up at the diner and asks to speak to Money outside. He explains that he figured out who did the drive-by at the party the previous night and that he wants to go after them. Money gets angry and tells Shotgun to forget about it, at least until after they finish the gun deal, that they don't need to be drawing any attention to themselves. Money confronts Howie and is upset with him for telling Shotgun where to find him. He makes it clear that Howie should only answer to him. Later, Money checks in with his parole officer Kutcher, who takes pictures of his gang tattoos to make sure he hasn't gotten any new ones. Kutcher asks him about the party the previous night and Money denies him being there. He produces a receipt for the hotel he stayed at as proof, but Kutcher doesn't believe him. Young Money is on a bus on the way to prison, where he will be kept with the more dangerous convicts because of his manslaughter charge. The prisoners are escorted inside where the other convicts cat call and tease them. Money finds a bunk and settles in. That night, when the guard on duty leaves to go to the bathroom, several of the older convicts restrain and abuse one of the new prisoners. Money decides that he won't be taken advantage of while he's here. The next day, in the prison yard, Money is confronted by a convict who seems to already have a problem with him. Seeing that the rest of the prisoners are watching, Money decides to throw the first punch and beat the man. The guards break it up by pepper spraying the man and escort Money to a cell. The next day in the yard, Money is asked to meet with some of the other prisoners who saw what he was capable of and wanted to recruit him. They are a white supremacist gang and their leader, Bottles, advises him to join a gang quickly, because no one does well in prison on their own. Sometime later, Money has a visitation with his wife Kate and she tells him that Tom's wife will be suing them for the wrongful death of her husband. 
she tells him she's going to drop out of design school and get a job instead. Money instructs her to sell the house to pay for the lawsuit, but she refuses. This upsets Money and he makes her promise not to let his mistake affect her life. Money agrees to join the gang, and as a test, they have him smuggle a balloon full of dope from the main floor to the yard. When Money asks how he's supposed to get away with this, he's told he's going to have to use lube and shove it up his butt. He reluctantly agrees, already worried about what might happen to him if he disappoints them. He inserts the balloon that night, and the next day on the yard, one of the members guards him while he takes it out and then brings it to Bottles, who is satisfied. Back in the present, Money visits Kate, his wife, and goes to dinner with her. He gives her an envelope of cash, but she refuses it. She is angry at him for not having contact with her or Josh for the past seven years and she doesn't want his gang money. He assures her that the money he's trying to give her is clean, and that after she gets it notarized, it will be the last time she'll ever see him. Later, Money and the rest of the gang go to a punk show to discuss the gun deal. They make sure the guns are all still secure in the storage unit. They plan to take a moving truck to the storage unit and load it up. Shotgun seems distracted and nervous during the meeting. After they disband, Money tells Howie that he's going to take the truck. He follows Shotgun to the parking lot of a Mexican restaurant and watches him talk with Kutcher. Shotgun has been working with Kutcher as a spy for the gun deal, and Kutcher wants him to wear a wire. Shotgun protests, saying that if the gang catches him wearing it they'll kill him. They agree to just continue tracking Shotgun's phone, but Kutcher warns him that if he loses service for even a second, They'll make sure his girlfriend doesn't get released and Shotgun will be sent back to prison. Money, frustrated with what he's seen, goes back to his hotel room to work out restlessly. He rifles through photographs of his family and sets all of his things neatly on the bed. Kate goes to visit Money the next day, to let him know that she got the money notarized. She brought Josh, even though Money didn't want her to. Josh is upset with him for not being in contact with them for so long and he begs his father to come back home with them so they can help him. Money refuses and tells Josh to forget about him and slams the door in his face. No matter how much he wants to, he can't get them involved in his new life. He notices that he's being watched by officers outside his hotel, so he climbs out the bathroom window and takes a taxi to meet with Howie. He asks him how he met Shotgun, and Howie explains that he knew this guy in Afghanistan that was always talking about the white supremacist gang he was in. When they got back home, the guy introduced him to Shotgun. Back in the prison days, in the yard, Bottles explains to Money that in prison, you are either a warrior or a victim, and that he needs money to kill a snitch for them. Money and another gang member get ready to kill the supposed rat as the guards let them all out of their cells to go to the yard. They pull the prisoner into a cell where Money stabs him to death, then change their clothes and walk with the rest of the prisoners like nothing happened. To further prove he's loyal to the gang, Money must participate in a prison riot in the yard. They all get ready and bring out their weapons and the fighting begins. Most everyone gets stabbed, several people are killed, and Money is able to successfully kill someone who is targeting one of their members. The guards start shooting at prisoners to break up the fighting and everyone is forced to lay on the ground. Money looks up at the wall and sees a camera, which he knows must have caught him on tape. In court, with Kate in attendance, Money is sentenced to an additional nine years for his participation in the prison riot and killing a man. As he is led away, he tells Kate to forget about him. Money is taken to a higher level security part of the prison and is given a new cell with another prisoner. They get along and work out together as they're both part of the same gang. They get one hour of yard time a day in different cages so there's no chance of a riot. Money's new cellmate introduces him to Redwood, one of the gang's higher-ups. Money receives divorce papers while still in jail and signs them, glad that his wife is moving on. When being taken to the yard, Money is set up to where he has to fight another prisoner while they're both in cuffs in front of Redwood. The fight is quickly interrupted by guards with pepper spray. One day Roberts takes Money to the cage next to the Beast, their gang leader, to let them talk in private. The Beast explains that a lot of the cops think they run the show in prison, when the reality is that the prisoners are in charge. The Beast offers Money a higher position in the gang where he will get access to his own cell and lots of books to read. He explains that Roberts is one of the guards, who works with their gang. Money accepts. Years later, when Money is soon to be released, he gets a call from the Beast, who instructs him to handle a massive gun deal once he's out. Money protests, hoping to get his life back, but the Beast tells him that his loyalty to the gang ends when he's six feet under and threatens his family. In the present, Money goes to a hardware store and buys a bunch of supplies to help him cover his tracks. He tells the rest of the gang that he's going to Shotgun's house to pick him up for the deal. When he gets there, he confronts Shotgun about being a rat and kills him. 
He puts Shotgun's phone in his hand so police find it. When Kutcher finds Shotgun's body and the phone, he uses it to get information about where the gun deal is going to take place and Money provides it, pretending he thinks Shotgun is still alive. Kutcher sends some of his men to go through Money's hotel room and when they get there, they discover he's already gone. Money stops at a convenience store to get some supplies. Later, he arrives at the storage unit and tells the others that when he went to go pick up Shotgun, he wasn't there. He convinces them to follow through with the deal anyway, and they start loading the guns into the truck. On their way to the drop-off site, Money makes sure his phone is on so the cops can track it. He also sends coordinates to Kutcher. Howie drives the truck while Money sits in the passenger seat. The rest of the gang is in the back with the guns. Money puts a gun to Howie's head and asks how many guns there really are. Howie tells him that there are 1,000 more in a different storage unit and he had already made a deal with Shotgun to sell them long before he met Money. Money tells him to jump out of the car and disappear, and that if he ever hears of him again, he will find him and he will kill him. Howie obliges and Money continues his way to the drop-off site where he tells the rest of his gang he dropped Howie off to be a scout. He meets with Herman and tells him that Shotgun was a rat and has been taken care of. He also tells him about the other 1,000 guns and suggests they go through with this deal to make everyone happy, and then after it's all over, they'll split the profit from the other guns. They shake hands on it as another truck pulls up to pick up the merchandise. The other men give Herman and Money a bag full of money, and just as they verify it, the cops surround them and start shooting. Herman and Money are arrested. Money is sent back to prison and Kutcher tries to make a deal with him. If he gives up the beast, he can walk free, but Money refuses and says he's going to serve his time on death row. He is returned to his solitary cell, where he removes a razor he had hidden up his bum. Roberts takes him into the yard to meet with the beast in their separate cages. The beast is furious about Money having killed Shotgun and getting everyone caught and says he will kill his family. When Roberts approaches to take Money back inside, Money pulls the razor on Roberts and locks him in the cage. He takes Roberts' key and unlocks the beast's cage. He lunges at him, but Money slits Beast's throat, killing him. Before releasing Roberts, Money makes him agree to write up a report saying that the Beast attacked him first and he was just defending himself. Roberts also has to agree to get his death row sentence reduced to a life sentence. He also says that since he killed the Beast, he is in charge now and Roberts agrees to everything. Sometime later, Kutcher gets a text from Money with the coordinates to the storage unit, where he finds the other gun stash. One day Money receives a letter from his son. He has finally accepted reality and will try to move on. The end.